It's Thursday, April 24th, 2014. I'm Ariel Nunez and from our CBS studios in New York City, welcome to The 404. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to The 404 Show. I'm Jeff Bacalar. And I'm Bridget Carey. Thank you, Bridget Carey. Thank you for bailing me out <laughs> once again, bringing me from below the ocean floor to the surface to the top. That's what you do for I'm me. I'm your little arm floaties. You are. You really are. <laughs> I still wear those. Is that weird? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Only in the ocean, though. It pulls uncomfortable. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Um, filling in for Justin Yu once again. Justin's going to be back next week from what I hear. That's all. That's only like rumors and stuff. I'm mm. told he's going to be here next week. But we've got a lot you of. You gotta know if your co-host is going to be here or not. <laughs> you would think so, but these are all you know things that we just really have no control over. Yeah. Ultimately, so um, we also have really awesome guests coming in next week, which I'm very excited about. I will tease at the end of the show, okay. um, and uh, we can we can get to that. Uh, when the time comes, there's a lot of news going on today, Bridget Carey. <gasps> Tell there's me a about ton. it. There's a ton of stuff. So you have a busy day. Yeah. How are you going to cram an entire day's worth of news into a two minute and 40 second spot? It's what I do, baby. It's what you do. Yeah. Facebook and Amazon and FCC. There's just a lot going on. Today. There's a lot going on. The first thing that uh, jumped out to us was the FCC stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's information coming out today that says a new proposal from the FCC could, could potentially allow companies to pay ISPs for faster service. It's kind of like saying pay a toll to drive on the faster lane of our highway to get to consumers. So Comcast saying, hey, Netflix, if you want to have a better speed you should pay more right. to go on this extra highway. The problem is the controversy of, of, this, of this concept is it's not fair to everyone. Not every company is going to have the resources to be able to pay for that extra lane highway. And so you have startups and other websites going, well, great. So now I'm going to be slower just because I can't pay Comcast or pay Time Warner more to be able it's, to have to be able to get to people. It should be an even playing field. That's the argument. I, I agree with you for the most part. I don't. And, and look, I am not a fan of, you know, the issues that come with net neutrality. Like, I obviously I think it should all be free game and, and open mm -hmm. to everybody. The problem I see is I, for me, I just don't want anything throttled and changed compared to the way it is now. Like, I don't want all of a sudden my internet to sort of like chug along. You know, like right now mm -hmm. I can stream HD video using anything. And we're at this, you know, and I guess maybe that's like a threshold. I just don't want anything to go beyond that. Right now you can visit any website, you can mm -hmm. do any service, you can do anything like that. I think from this sort of starting point, maybe you could introduce other extracurricular sort of things that possibly you, you might have to pay extra for but i don't think like like you said like we right now we're on this highway you shouldn't have to pay any more to to you know get in get in a faster lane or something like that it worries me about the potential for just just shady business deals i mean you have a situation where maybe some company like Comcast, which is part of NBC, says, you know, uh, are we like our Hulu shows maybe have this faster speed, you know? Maybe you don't pay as much as someone else who's more of a competitor. You don't, you know, you, you gotta hope that FCC will be a watchdog, that everything's being done fairly and that there aren't, uh, you know, privileges given to some over others. It's, it, it, it just, it doesn't make me feel good about also having that main highway, that, that average person highway, you know, well, is that just going to be neglected? Yeah. Uh, is it, are there going to be no improvements done for, for, well, you have to pay more if you right, want, right. you know, it's it, 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 it kind of can incentivize them to, to, to make it even better if you pay more and even I better know. if you pay more, it should just be oh, the same. This, oh, doesn't this really start to worry you a little bit? Yeah. It's kind of like, man, we don't realize how good we had it this long because it seemed like corruption and all that other junk that usually infiltrates its way into all things that are fun and good mm -hmm. took a really long time to get to the internet. And now, 
now it's finally happening. So because he's because they're giants, they're right, just right, giant sure. companies. I mean, now. let's be honest. There were ulterior motives going on when like NBC was. Oh, and Comcast was, you know, very much interested in acquiring these content distributors and content makers. All right, let's read a little more. Uh, whenever you're here, I feel like I have to put on my my journalist hat <laughs> and it's like really play by the rules and not speculate. So let's read what Maggie wrote here. She says that the new rules would prevent ISPs, internet service providers, from blocking or disrupting traffic to specific websites. So that's good. That's a good thing. That's don't block. Good. Don't don't, don't slow throttle, it down. Don't do anything like that. But, this is a big but, they would also let companies pay for special access directly to customers, allowing for superior service. And that is where you get the terrifying notion. Look, there's no blocking. There's no limiting and that's kind of like satisfying my initial you know uh anxiety where i was like look i don't want to all of a sudden have to pay extra to visit amazon.com mm -hmm. so they can't do that but they might be able to loophole that and finagle that language so that they do wind up charging you extra money to do something perhaps you might already be doing on the internet it's it's more like worry about competition you know think of it as um sure a company like that's well known like a netflix or someone else uh, can say you know what i'll pay comcast or amazon i'll pay comcast and time warner more to get faster access to you, Jeff, you know, mm. to, to make sure your experience is awesome. But that startup, that, that one who could be a good challenger, now is a bigger fight to make a difference. And the giants remain the giants. Yeah. Well, the only thing I could come up with for that is like those small people will just use the big time service until they get big enough where they can afford to the, thrive. The, to, the highway to, or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's a crazy sort of way to look just at it. Just keep it fair and square. I know. It's it's crazy. It's a scary time. Again, these are just like proposals. Nothing's yeah. written in stone. The FCC seems to move at a glacial pace. And, and, and this is changing by the day. So it's a story to definitely keep watching. Here's an example Maggie gives in her story here. Such a plan. Is this Maggie? I just want to make sure. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Roger Chang reporting here. Such a, such a plan would allow media streaming sites such as Netflix or sports websites like ESPN to pay extra to ensure that their traffic would get to customers in a speedy, unobstructed manner. So ESPN gets, gets to you, your experience is great, but man, that other sports website, the experience is so slow. I'm now, as a consumer, thinking it's them and not realizing that maybe they just can't, they're just not paying the extra fees to, See, you know, it, to, so, so it, it kind of warps your perception right. of that company unfairly. Exactly. It, you're totally right. I, it's crazy. Doesn't that seem to directly conflict with that first detail that says it won't limit ne and won't obstruct access? The word kind neutrality. Of, oh God, <laughs> this makes me nauseous. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, there's a, there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, it's a developing story. And uh, one that I'm actually going to really pay close attention we to. We should be outspoken about these I'm things and follow it. I'm not going to let the bad guys it. win. Yeah. I'm not going to let the bad guys win. There are, and I'm not saying anyone's a bad guy yet. But who has but their best there. interest of you in mind, right? right? Oh, no one. Come on. Yeah. No one does. Um, all right. We'll, we'll get out of the net neutrality talk for a little bit and keep it in the realm of streaming and stuff like that. Yesterday, a big time uh, distribution deal was announced HBO signing up mm -hmm. with Amazon Prime. They're going to get their app on Fire TV. This is a major deal. This is the first time HBO content is going to be available without an HBO subscription. I think that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. But then when you read the fine print, you're like, wait a minute. At least I did a big wait a minute because I'm like ready to call up Verizon and be like, hey, you could take that HBO uh, subscription and shove it. And then they'd be like, oh, I guess you don't like watching Game of Thrones. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Right. So the, the, min the big sort of detail here is that Game of Thrones is not included in your Amazon Prime subscription HBO access. Anything that's being aired right now actually isn't included. You, I mean, first off, Game of Thrones is not going to be a part of it at all. But like, if you like Girls or the Newsroom. Or Veep or, or Veep, anything awesome. You have to wait three years before it airs on, oh, that's t it. on TV. Oh, before, just three years? You know. Oh, just three years. I, I have something I want to get off my chest here. Get it off right now. Okay. 
Oh man, I have, this is a first. <laughs> I, ha- I, I have not ever watched an entire series of an HBO show before. I've never seen The Sopranos. <laughs> I've never, and I'm excited. <laughs> oh, oh, I've lost him. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? I'm saying I have seen, you know, a repeat on TV here and there for things that are syndicated, but I never owned HBO. I don't have any friends I've stolen the password for HBO Go for. It's not and stealing, so, it's borrowing. You know what I mean. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is someone who has Prime, I'm like, oh, uh, finally I can, you know, kind of catch up on these old shows. I'll have no one to talk to about them because everyone's way over all these shows. These They're old shows, but it's kind of cool to be like, oh, well, Huh, I don't have to pay for HBO to kind of get a chance to see him or pay for the DVDs or that kind of thing. I mean, I have downloaded some, you know, like episodes here and there to see things, but it's not like I've ever been like, oh, wow, I saw a whole season of the show because I never had HBO. And so they're, so no they're targeting me. They're targeting people like me who go, hmm, I never had HBO, but I hear all this buzz about all these shows. And you start watching it, you get into it. And then say three years when, when the, the, the newsroom, the first season comes out, I'm like, oh man, I'm all caught up now. Yeah. Now I feel so compelled to pay for it. I must get HBO. And so they're really targeting people like me. I, I, that's all I, I, I'm just saying, I'm kind of, I'm kind of in the camp that's at least like, hey, I can finally see The Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> the Sopranos, wait a sec. I feel like I've time traveled <laughs> or I'm talking to a time traveler. From a far away, I'm cultured. Land. I have seen oh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. I have seen but not these shows, a full but I've never been subscribed to like see the full season and stuff. Yeah. What is the most upsetting about your admission? <laughs> I'm trying to think. Is it? I think it's The Sopranos because The Sopranos is probably the best series ever. The made. Wire. That's the another one I hear a lot of talk deal. about. I've always been wow. like, oh man, wow. I gotta go download The Wire. What's I gotta find like? a way to see the. What's, everyone talks about The Wire. What's it like? <laughs> Not, never seeing that. I've never met anyone like my, that. My world is open to so many. No, this more is great because the first the first step is admitting you have a problem. <laughs> No, no, I'm joking around. It's just very rare for like... Yeah. Yeah. But wow. Because you know what? I'll I'll tell you another thing. What have you been doing? I've been lazy. Yeah. I've been watching things that are just available to me instead of going hunting online for it. Right, right, right. That's amazing stuff. Um, Man, no... Wow. That's... So I basically, I'm I, ba- I basically, if it's not on the TV or easily downloadable, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, I guess I missed my chance. But they were, I'm not gonna go hunt for it later. But they released uh, <laughs> like DVDs That's of what the I mean. Sopranos. I've, and- I've never cared enough to go buy them because I felt right. like eh, it's such a time investment. But when it's on Netflix and I'm just get caught up in things, I binge watched Breaking Bad. I, okay. I watched the whole thing on the last season year when everyone's buzzing about you it. Watched all. I, I, yeah. I was like, you know what? Let me go on Netflix and just binge on it. You know, and the, right. And, and so I, I got caught up more or less by the time of the finale. Well, look, at least you didn't have to suffer through true blood because that show sucks. <laughs> um, all right, so there's, I guess, a silver lining there. Yeah, there you go, thanks. <laughs> Man, even like Deadwood is good. Even there's the shows of, that okay, aren't good are I'm good. I'm not even disrespecting the shows. I you know, think they're I know. awesome. Yeah. You know, I want to see them. So that's why I'm kind of like, all right, finally, right. I guess Prime is going to pay up just a little for me. It, it really least. will. And, I, and now I can make pop culture references that are really old. Right. And I feel like you're going to be like, <laughs> you're going to tell, you're going to start telling people to go to like the Bada Bing and everyone's going to know what you mean now. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, you're going to be wait. excited about that. <laughs> I have no idea what you're uh, I know. <laughs> the, the future is very bright for you. Uh, okay, fine. So in your very unique situation <laughs> very unique remarkably unique but yeah you still got to pay for it if you want to be on top of all the good stuff right, like so like even true detectives i guess is not yeah, going to be part of this either anything in that 3 year threshold is mm-hmm. absent and guess what that sucks and for yes i know the anomaly that sits to the left of me is taken care of okay but for nor us normies, no, I'm kidding. Well, it's for anyone <laughs> it's, who, they're, they're, they're opening to a new audience, right? Right, right. And, so and I joke, but it's yeah. true. Like, you know, I, you pay a lot of money for HBO every month, I think. I, I think why, I, I must pay close to like 20 bucks. It's crazy. <laughs> but whatever, True Detective is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. So I have to, yeah. you know, pay the small price of admission. But this to me is not a gigantic incentive to the average person Mm -hmm. and when you eliminate that three-year window of stuff all of a sudden hey this isn't that cool well that's that's what happened to me actually with breaking bad the last season wasn't available and i started paying for it on the paid part of amazon emotionally and monetarily (laughs) 
paying for it. <laughs> paid for it. Yeah. So yeah, it's that guy. Then get get you hooked, and then you then you really want to seek it out. I'm curious what people think if they're in 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 my camp on this. I know how you are. You're just happy. You're just like happy to be there because they're good. Things, good. It's for just what great. I pay for anyway. And it's amazing. And HBO it has an amazing archive of great stuff, and you'll be set for yeah. the next you know decade. But for people like me who have watched quasi religiously all it these shows do anything doesn't for you. do anything for me no. and this deal is not that major um yeah you have access to this amazing archive but you know it's all about watching game of thrones right when it comes out mm -hmm. uh and you know hbo go is still going to require that you know isp password thing now what would be really awesome is if they did it where maybe they just delayed it a week per episode instead of three years you know then you might consider dropping hbo for, for the sake of going all right I'll, I'll put up with a week or maybe even a month without spoilers but let's know? be honest bridget hbo is the most pirated freaking content yeah. provider on earth mm -hmm. people download game of Thrones episodes by the millions mm -hmm. so i guess at the end of the day uh, what we're saying is uh pay for all your content is what we're saying. yeah it's, it's for people who maybe don't want to go through the effort or know how right right sure those 14 people who have no idea. <laughs> not listeners of the show, probably. Of course not. <laughs> but you shouldn't do that. Anyway, moving along. That's the deal with HBO and Amazon. Uh, I guess I was the only one in the world who didn't know what IFTTT was. If this, then that. I had no idea. People wrote in yesterday. They said, Jeff, what's wrong with you? It's been around for three years. You sound like a dummy. Well, look. Nobody's perfect, okay? Bridget never watched HBO. I never heard of IFTT. T, 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 T. Okay? Uh, and obviously, the day after I announce and admit that I've been in the dark about this technology, along comes a freaking brand new Android app that unlocks a whole another cluster F sort of thing of, of functionality for IFTTT. It's a whole new world for you. It's amazing. Get this, Android users. <laughs> Sorry, iPhone. Well, it's been it's been out for the iPhone. But not as like <laughs> hardcore, <laughs> right, apparently. Right, because, you know, Android's all open. It's super open starting now. Uh, there, you know, and there is, like you said, there is a release for IFTTT for iPad and iOS, but now there is a whole brand new set of functionality that has been unlocked that IFTTT for Android will bring to your phone. There is a ridiculous amount of functionality packed into this. For example, you can have like a text message automatically backed up to your Google Drive or Dropbox whenever you get one. You could figure out a way to have it send you a text message for you. Like, remember, I was, I don't know if you heard this, I was complaining that there's no service that just like texts someone when I arrive somewhere. Right. And I, and it sounds like you might be able to finagle a way to do that, cook up a recipe with this app for Android. Yeah. It's really cool stuff. I, I think your enthusiasm is making me want to try it. Because, it's so cool. Because once again, the lazy factor kicks in and yeah. I go, I have so much to do. Do I really want to spend time making a program up? But some of the examples, you know, make a lot of sense, like just a backup for your contacts, you right. know, because let's be honest, like, I mean, on the iPhone, the iCloud is annoying to deal with okay. you know, for backing up. I don't back up because of it. And, or I do once in a blue moon, you know, and, and things like that, that every time I add something, make sure you add it to Dropbox or every time I take a picture, add it to Dropbox. That's kind of neat. And when it's, when it's meant for someone like me, who's too lazy to do things, you know, yeah. I'm kind of, I'm kind of interested in it. The possibilities are endless. The community is pretty cool because you can not only cook up your own recipe, but you can then share that recipe with other IFTTT users. Mm -hmm. I just sound like a little kid in a candy shop. I just, it's opened up so much functionality for me. And it's, and like the second it clicks, the logic clicks with you, you're like, Jesus, I could do anything. Um, and, you know, like, what's it limited by? I mean, does, I, I really does, does an app like Evernote need to be participating or can people right. just. So that's you know? the, the limit. And there really doesn't seem to be much limitation. There's a few things I've discovered in my 48 hours of messing around <laughs> with it that I've been like, oh, it'd be cool if I could tweak that a little bit. But they really seem to have every sort of, you know, uh, platform on board. Um, the biggest I'm, okay, I'm, I'm most familiar with the smart home stuff. That, right, that, that, there's a lot that of that. We're like, oh, if you have this, you know, appliance that when you get home, the the lights will turn on. Right. Motion. I'm, but I never use it on my smartphone only, though. Big thing for me was I have all these people 
saying like Jeff, you need a website. I don't really have a website. Mm -hmm. Like if you go to jeffbagler.com, mm -hmm. it goes to like my Twitter page, which is just like pretty stupid. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, well, let me get a, a website. And all I want to do is like populate my website with my tweets. Yeah. Which sounds stupid, but I guess that's what you want. Because there's a lot to do in the day. You need something. Yeah. I don't just... really understand the internet. <laughs> I'm just sort of here winging it. And I figure, all right, well, let me. IFTT was really uh, uh, useful in setting up that sort of workflow. So it just sort of opened up a lot of possibilities for me. All right, you got me. I'm on the hunt. You got I'm, me curious because I'm a crafter at heart and this is like tech crafting. Oh, and, totally. And so I feel like I'm getting a little giddy now when totally. you're talking about it. So I, I'm, I'm totally into that right now. And uh, if anyone has any tips, please send it along. Uh, today, Scott Stein wrote something interesting about uh, iPads. This is, uh, this is a really good uh, op-ed. He says, what will it take to get people to buy new iPads? Jill Schlesinger was here yesterday, talked about the Apple earnings report. iPhone sales are through the roof. iPad sales, not so much. They're selling them, mm -hmm. but they're not selling as well as they used to. And Because people already have an iPad. <laughs> right. It's got, you know, he starts off the story saying like, look, my wife has an iPad too, and it's been fine for what, four years, however long it's you been You don't out. need to replace them that much. I mean, we replace our phones out of a couple reasons. One, every two years, you feel like you're you're going to lose out money if you, and they're with, affordable with, with that to contract do that. that you yeah. might as well just do it. I was able to upgrade for free because of trade-ins practically, right. you know. So, but with a tablet, they kind of, you know, keep doing the same tablet-y thing. It right. doesn't, your experience doesn't change all that much. And the performance is, I don't wanna say it's, it's, it's plateaued, but it's definitely not followed a similar sort of proportion to where the demand for horsepower, uh, you know, is exponential. Mm -hmm. it fe I feel like that, if you were to chart that, that's sort of leveled out a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's not really anything out there that's that's making the, the iPad Air chug along or lag out. I mean, the smaller size was a big jump. People might go, oh, I can use it for more things. I can throw it in my purse easier because it's smaller. That, the, but after that, right, like other than size, yeah, it starts to become a reason like, why do I really need another one? Exactly. Uh, and like we said before, you know, the turnover rate for an iPhone, that's every two years and you're spending, you know, two, three hundred dollars. If you want to get a new iPad regularly, it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because you're spending like upwards of five hundred dollars. I mean, how often do you replace a laptop? We're starting right. to talk the same way we do about laptops. It's, exactly. They, they kind of can take, you know, they kind of can live for a while. And that's one of the points he, he, he kind of gets into in his story here. You're right. It's a freaking computer. Mm -hmm. You know, you might accessorize it a little bit with sure. a, a new keyboard. Treat but yourself that, yeah. with a new case, right? <laughs> but buying a whole brand new, you know, computer is crazy to do every, you know, year or two years or even three years. Mm -hmm. So I think the iPad is falling into that category. I also think a lot of people who have an iPad 2, 3, or 4 are just content. The air is amazing. It's super light, but they're all light. None of them are breaking anyone's backs. They're, uh, they're, they're productive for the most part. They all seem to perform pretty well. The battery life is great. The screen, the retina screen is fantastic. What the hell am I buying a new one every year for? They're really going to need to do something that takes uh, 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 or draws a line in the sand and separates it from the iPhone and from, you know, the other existing iPads where people are like, oh my God, I have to have that. I find myself not really using my iPad that often. Yeah. I mean, it becomes the, the thing to kind of have by your TV if you're browsing, but I have my phone closer sometimes and I right. just end up being on my phone. Um, yeah, and then when it does have something crazy different, is that something that's going to be integrated with like, oh, if you buy the new one, it works with this amazing new thing with Apple TV, you yeah. know, it's kind of like, it's going to make you want to buy into maybe a couple other new, new things that, oh, only the new one can, can do this really cool trick. Right. And then you are like, oh, well, I guess I have and to. And you know, that's going to happen. Right. Like that, and that's how they do. Because think about it. You. How else do you basically force people to upgrade? Right. You're going to have to make something so exclusive and so awesome that only the iPad Air 2, and if they call it that. I mean, oh, the naming. Oh, the naming. Or maybe like iPad airier. <laughs> Airy. Now with now with less. And and they and light. Tim Cook just comes light. out and it's on his palm and it just floats away <laughs> with like little iPad wings. That'd be pretty tight. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm imagining like a yogurt commercial where everything's so light and fluffy. Right. Oh, my iPad. Wouldn't it be cool? <laughs> There's like billowing drapes in the background. Yeah. My iPad Air. Like I'm telling you, come this fall, the way they're gonna do it. 
they'll they'll set up the keynote mm -hmm. and then it'll just be like clouds everywhere and then in sitting indian style tim cook will just like levitate down on a cloud <laughs> and and an ipad will just fly to his hand it's magical that's it that's how it's gonna work all right good glad we're all in agreement there uh, if you didn't get upset uh, with your ISP during our discussion about net neutrality to start off the show, you're probably going to get upset when you find out that a recent study shows you're probably not getting the broadband speeds that you're actually paying for. Well, this I don't is think shocking. most people are checking even. They go, okay, sounds good. Uh, I'll just live my life because I got enough to worry about. And they're not checking really. Right. I'm kind of a freak like that. Every time I sign up for a new internet access, which has maybe only been five times in my life, but the first thing I do is go to speedtest.net and mm -hmm. refresh, refresh until I get that number that I'm happy with. Right. Doesn't mean anything. I don't know why I do it. I just got to do it. Because you're, because you're a savvy tech, techno. Is it savvy or like obsessed? <laughs> I don't know. I'll let you decide. I want savvy. That's a that's okay. a better label. The Wall Street Journal issued a report that included a study from Ookla. Have you heard of Ookla? Mm -hmm. O O K L A. Well, they're the operator of the popular speed testing website oh, that I just yeah. talked about, speedtest.net, and they uh, surveyed six hundred and forty six thousand speedtest.net users over the past year the purpose was to determine how close isps are coming to their advertised speed uh and and what they're actually getting the, the actual results of that so believe it or not there are six isps that um that are actually delivering higher than advertised speeds hmm. to the people who are paying for them that includes Mid Continent Communications. What the hell? I've never heard of that. Have you ever heard of that? Nah. Earthlink, I've heard of. Yeah. Optimum Online. Earthlink. Wow. Optimum Online. That is a Northeast based. That's I see in their Manhattan. commercials. That's yeah. in New Jersey. That's in Long Island. I'm surprised by that, but they are, in fact, offering a higher speed rate. Wide Open West. Again, shoulder shrug, and then FiOS and Charter Communications. I'm a little surprised about FiOS. Uh, personally, I think their speed has kind of tanked uh, over the last three years that I've had them. But you can go to our uh, show notes for today, and we will link to the chart that shows the majority of ISPs, including Comcast, including Time Warner, Time Warner, including AT&T, Uverse, all perform far below their advertised speeds that's that's really a shame like fcc's got to step up and like, right like, why and like you someone's not? gotta gotta blow the whistle on this and like for be, sure. the, be the ref to say ah, ah that's not right why don't you you stop for a second with the net neutrality stuff and start slapping fines on yeah. ISPs that are not delivering their advertised speeds like well it's a lot of factors no i don't know about that yeah, it, don't give me yeah. this node talk every time you you tell me oh you're not close to a node Get out of here. That's not why there's not good internet. <laughs> then, then, then don't sell me. Let me pay for what I'm getting. Yeah, you know? exactly. They should, pr they should prorate it. Kind of like your electricity and your exactly. gas. You know, pay for what you use. Uh, maybe I don't want to do maybe. that. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized something. Because yeah, electricity and internet are totally connected. Yeah. So my electricity bill is absurd. So I can't but imagine a, my internet bill. But at least when it comes to like speed, if, if there is a problem on their end, they should reimburse a little bit. Maybe. I agree. Totally agree. And uh, I'm glad that we agree. Yes. Is what I am. It's good to agree. Finally, I had to bring up this story because Viber is something I use every single day. Really? You use, use Viber a lot? I do. I'm in a, I'm in a Viber like chat room with about 11 of my closest friends. And we've been in a chat room for about four years. Oh, best buddies. Yeah, it's weird, but it's just an easy <laughs> way. It's an easy way for all of us to just get information out right away. Mm -hmm. You know, like, where's everyone right now? Oh, in a dumpster, whatever. So, <laughs> what, don't worry about what I do on the weekends. <laughs> Viber apparently has been sending video and images without any encryption whatsoever. So when you're inside of one of these chat rooms, or if you just do a straight up, you know, chat with one person, any video you send or image you send is not encrypted. When I read this, I was just kind of, um, I, I, I kind of got my grumpy tech reporter hat on and I was like, there you go. That's why you can't trust anyone. You can't, can't trust anyone. And we're, and we're also trusting because we assume like, well, it's their business. They should do it right. Otherwise they won't get business. And then something like this comes along where a guy goes, hey, you know, it's possible to just tap in and hack in, you know. With okay, fine. Look, 
is this good? It's not good. But I also don't think it's that bad. They say that they haven't, they don't have record of anyone being affected right, by this, which, whatever that means. I mean, that's like the knee jerk response that you're yeah. supposed to say. Uh, here's what I think. I think it is a, a bad vulnerability. Um, and any photo you take of yourself that could be nasty or whatever it is. I don't know what people do on Viber. Is people send in all these videos and photos, whatever They're it is. They're just very trusting that, oh, I'm sure only me and this other person right. can see it. Potentially, there's there's a chance that so, a, a nefarious individual could perhaps, uh, you know, home in on that and, and, and grab it. Fine. They're going to update the app to, to fix it. I'm not defending Viber. This is a, a vulnerability and a flaw that they should fix. But I also don't think it's like the biggest deal ever i you know but shouldn't i, I mean like kind pictures of... are out there on the internet they are yes and 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 i think the first the first rule you have to teach yourself when you when you start using the internet which is like now when you're three or whatever when you're old enough to start doing things like this just know anytime a photo is like digitized like taken it's there and it, and it will never be 100% secure unless it's on a computer that is not connected to the internet. I agree. You should never trust anything. But it seems like almost your argument is kind of like, well, can't trust anything. So yeah. if it goes wrong, I guess I shouldn't be mad. Well, yeah, you know, like, that like, is my, like, my argument is everything sucks. <laughs> nothing works. Nothing works I'll the just, way it's supposed to. I'll just to. keep being a customer. I yeah. guess. I guess I got a. I, I got a bone in my hamburger. I guess I'll keep eating at that restaurant. Well, or, that's you know, a little different. I but, don't know. I'm just kind of like saying, you know, like like we should be kind of angry because then it'll encourage them to not make mistakes like this for future agreed. future companies. And and we should be upset. They're just getting like a lot heart of heart bleed was terrible. Right, it was bad. They're getting a lot of bad press, and they deserve it. Mm -hmm. But. Like I said, like, you know, the internet is, a, is, is still sort of like a wild west. Mm -hmm. And you have to know that no matter what you're using, as much as someone swears up and down that it's going to be okay, there is a potential that it won't be okay. And that goes for using your credit card and doing everything else like that. It's just the world we live in. There's a super secret privacy app uh, for, for sending pictures that are uber encrypted called Wicker. I don't know if you ever used it. Okay. Where like you, to, to, to see the picture that you send me, I have to hold my finger down on the screen, which means I can't take a screenshot. Interesting. You know, I can't do the little trick on the iPhone, take a screenshot of it. But it's sort of like Snapchat. But, but I, well, Snapchat, you can, you, you can take, take a, a screenshot yeah, of. But you have to hold your finger on it. Right. But yeah. then if you send text or other things, I can still take a picture of that. Nothing is really right, safe. Right. Like I can take a know? photo of your photo. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I was like, oh, I could just like yeah. hold my finger down and take another camera. So exactly. nothing is going to save you. There Nothing's you go. protected. Right. I mean, like. And anyone can get hacked at any time and put all this on the internet. It's great. It's yeah. Great. It's a good feeling. So, which is why I just start wearing a t shirt with my social security number on it. <laughs> just don't, just don't bother. It can't, can't win. Don't try. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> Uh, Bridget, thank you for being here. Thanks for having this me. This was a wonderful show. Uh, some programming notes. Uh, unfortunately, we're not able to do a show tomorrow. I have a, a personal thing I must take care of. So uh, with no Justin around, we'll, uh, we'll have to cancel the show tomorrow. But we're back Monday. Mm -hmm. And Monday, things start to get pretty freaky. Scott Aukerman, host of the Comedy Bang Bang podcast and the Comedy Bang Bang show on IFC, We'll be back here in the studio on Monday, and we're going to have a cool. very fun time with him. On Tuesday, Katie Linendahl. A lot of people wanted to get her back. She's coming back on Tuesday. Again, that's Katie Linendahl. She'll be here. And uh, at some point, I would imagine Justin will resurface. So <laughs> next week's looking up. I'm pretty excited. Very cool. All right. Follow Bridget on Twitter at Bridget Carey. Check out Seen It Update. That's CNET.com slash update. That works. That's right. right. Okay. that's Keeping pretty, it simple. Let's keep it simple. I like it. That will do it for us this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Shoot us an email, the 404 at CNET.com. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, and all that jazz. Uh, we're back here on Monday with Scott Aukerman. Very excited for that. Until then, I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Bridget Carey. I'm Ariel Nunez. This has been the 404 High Tech Low Brow. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you Monday.